I literally feel like I'm sitting here having Thanksgiving with you guys. I don't like yams. That's why y'all ain't gonna see no yams out up here. I don't like yams. I don't like sweet potato. <gasps> you guys. I forgot the pie. I forgot the pie. <laughs> y'all, I forgot the pie. Put the pie in the middle. We didn't forget about you, pie. Who's who's an OG? I wanna know right now. Y'all would be proud of me. Y'all saw my plate? Let's just do a flashback real quick. All right, you guys, I am gonna try to do this voice memo really quick and to the point because I gotta get this video up for you guys. So I'm gonna start with the chicken. And like I mentioned in the video part before, uh, you wanna get your big stuff out of the way. And since I'm doing this in one hour, um, I wanna start all of the things that are gonna be sitting or gonna be cooking for an hour's length time. So that means the chicken is first, but I would definitely recommend getting a couple of fresh herbs, some lemon, garlic, onion, and butter, and oil. Um, just a really quick roasted chicken recipe. And what I'm gonna do is um, stuff my bird with the onion. I never recommend stuffing it with actual stuffing. That's just unsanitary. And then I'm going to be lathering up my chicken with a half a stick of butter and um, like equal parts oil. So after I stuff it, uh, I tuck the wings underneath so that those don't burn. Um, I'm not really gonna trust this chicken. I don't really, um, I don't really care about doing all the extras right now. What I'm trying to do is just lather it up with my butter and oil. I'm doing a liberal amount of salt and pepper and then I'm sticking it in my pan at uh, 350 and it went for about an hour until it was golden brown. If you're unsure about how long to cook it, make sure you always have your thermometer on hand so that you can temp it. And then I'm just gonna cut it up and separate it. I feel like this is the easiest way to go about it, especially if you're gonna be um, having guests over to just cut it before you all sit down and eat so that you're not like trying to cut it while eating and but that's totally up to you and this chicken came out so juicy so tender All right, and now I'm gonna be doing my buns. And like I said, um, like I mentioned in the recipe part, or in the um, eating part, I had to pick and choose what I was gonna do from scratch and what I wasn't gonna do from scratch. And um, these rolls are super simple, super easy. So I buy a bag of fresh or uh, frozen rolls, um, frozen soft yeast rolls. I pull them out and then I'm gonna set them here so that they can start to proof and come to room temperature before I bake them. So that's the second thing I did because I knew that these were gonna take some time to be, um, to proof up. And While that's happening, I am going to start my pumpkin pie because obviously pumpkin pie also has to have time to bake. And I didn't make the pie dough from scratch, which is totally fine because the pie dough, I mean, Technically, you don't really have to do it from scratch. If you want to, you can. Um, 
but since we only got an hour people you got to pick and choose so what I did was half a can and I just winged it all you need to make sure is that you got the flavor in there and that it is stable so when you add sweetened condensed milk like whatever the back of the can says all of those things are stabilizers and so I had to make sure there was enough stabilizer to make sure that the the pie actually set up when it baked I did three-fourths cup of half and half and a quarter cup of heavy cream two eggs a, a heaping amount of a heaping one-fourth cup of brown sugar and I did a little bit of cinnamon pumpkin pie spice salt because you need to balance that flavor and I also recommend try it as you go guys there's no harm in just like dipping your finger in trying it and adding more of what you like more sugar more spice whatever whatever you want and this pie actually came out perfect I had some today um, with my coffee oh delicious you guys are seeing me wing this recipe on camera and I can tell by the consistency that it needed more egg and um, I tested it for flavor so I added more of this or more of that so like I said test it try it as you go you'll you won't know unless you try it um, but this is a really good I think this is a really good base to start with if you guys are going to recreate this pie recipe let me know down in the comments below but um, definitely definitely try it as you go you, you only know if you try it and then I cover the outer edges of my pumpkin pie crust so that it doesn't burn and then I pop it in the oven and that actually didn't take an hour I remember that only taking about 30 minutes before it set up and how you know that it's going to be set up is that if the middle has just a slight jiggle not e if it's like you move it and the in the middle of it is still moving around and then, then you know it's not done you need to make sure that when you move it that the middle is set up and it's just giving you a little jiggle So now I'm going to be moving on to my greens. This is going to be the third thing that is going to be taking some time that I'm that I'm going to let sit on the stove for about an hour. So I'm doing a half of an onion. And bless, I found when I went to Walmart and I was looking for some greens, all of the greens were sold out. But then I found this big bag of greens that was already pre-cut. And I was like, that's perfect. That'll save me so much time. And then I took this package and I just halved it. You don't want too much bacon because then it'll be super fatty. So I tried to choose the side that had the, the more, or I tried to choose the side that had more meat than fat. What? Then I just washed my greens off. It was in a bag, so convenient. It said it was washed and ready, but just to make sure, I wanted to make doubly sure that it was clean, so I gave it another couple rinses. I drain it and then I start cooking my bacon first. You want to cook it until it's crispy or crisp to your liking. Remember that it's going to be soaking in liquid so it's basically going to just rehydrate as soon as it's sitting in that list, that um, liquid. I wouldn't I wouldn't say to crisp it completely up because then you'll end up with those those little, you know, have, if you've ever had baked beans, those little pieces of bacon that are in it and it's just kind of like non-existent but it's there and you're like what is that um i would recommend going a little less than what i did but since i was in a rush and i was just kind of like doing so many things at once i let it go a little bit longer than what i wanted it to but definitely make sure it has its crispy parts but not too crispy because then it won't rehydrate all the way and then i drain off the excess fat like i said you don't want a ton of fat you don't want to just be eating bacon fat 
Then I added my onions and garlic and I saute those for a minute. Pop my greens in and then I fill, I use like half a carton of this chicken stock. And then I added a little vinegar to finish it off. Now, I don't care what anybody says, the vinegar is what like takes it to the next level. It's, it's like the vinegar acts like this aging, like it's been simmering for hours and hours and hours. And really it was only simmering for an hour. And it was just, it's like that perfect amount of bite. This is why I stopped doing greens like the super hard way with your big old stock pot and your turkey legs and your smoked ham hocks and all, you don't need all that. Get you a pack of bacon, get you some onions, garlic, and your pack of greens, and you have that done in an hour. And it still tastes just as good. So now I'm gonna be doing my potatoes. This is pretty straightforward. I'm rinsing, cutting, and I'm putting it back into the water to remove um, a little bit of that starch. And then I drain them, boil them, and then I know when they're done, when the fork goes in and it doesn't fall apart, but it goes in and then the potato drops. You don't want to overcook your potatoes or undercook them. So poke a fork. If it falls apart, you overcooked it. If it sticks, obviously if it doesn't go all the way through, it's not done. But if it goes through and then falls right off, it's done. It's perfect. And this is also pretty straightforward. I just do, um, I think it was what, a half a stick of butter and like a half a cup. I think a half a cup of half and half. Um, do, do your mashed potatoes however you like, but if you don't know how to do mashed potatoes whatsoever, this is a really good base to start. And then I add a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and then I'm done. If you wanna do more, if you're more of an experienced cook, do whatever. This is a really good base to start for a very simple mashed potatoes. And plus you're gonna be having gravy with it, so you don't need to do too much. And I whip that with my whisk. I, I, I really believe that if you do it with a whisk, it makes it more creamier. It's And it's just like a more whipped mashed potato. You could obviously do this in your stand mixer or with your hand mixer or whatever, and that will yield a really good result too.
So now I'm gonna be doing my mac and cheese. Um, I My camera died, I think halfway through my whisking process, but this is all of the cheese I'm using. You guys know I don't like Velveeta, but I decided to use it this time because I'm always playing with my mac and cheese recipe. I don't have like that perfect go-to one yet. So what I'm gonna do is kind of start off like how I would do fondue. So I dumped in some half and half and um, I started using milk towards the end to thin it out, but like I said, I did not get that on camera. Um, but you guys will see when I pour it, the consistency of it. And that's the consistency you want. So then I just start to cook everything. I put my Belvita in first and then you wanna add your cheese in a little bit at a time so you're just not like overcrowding and making sure that it's incorporated. And so I ended up adding all my cheese and you see it's a little thick right here, but um, when my camera cut off, I, what I did was I grabbed milk and then I was adding in the milk until my consistency, my cheese mixture just thinned out. I didn't want it too thin and I didn't want it too thick. And then I put a little stick of like a tablespoon of butter, mix that around and then I add my spices, which were paprika, garlic powder, onion powder. And then look at this consistency when I poured in, like you can tell it's like a little bit thinner, but it's not too thick because remember it's gonna be cooked again. So like that. And then I get my cast, I butter my cast iron skillet. And then I put a layer down and then I put a layer of mozzarella cheese. And then I pour more and then another layer of mozzarella cheese. And then I baked it at 375 until it was bubbly and golden brown on top. And most importantly, the noodles kept its shape. That is a huge tip. Um, make sure when you cook your noodles, you cook them al dente, meaning they have a little bit of bite left to them. You don't want mushy noodles, especially if you're gonna be baking them. All you're gonna do is overcook your noodles. And if you like it like that, of course, that's fine. Um, if you want a little bite to your macaroni and cheese where it's not mush, make sure you're cooking your noodles al dente. And remember, they're gonna be, you're cooking them and then you're gonna be cooking them again. Just keep that in mind. And Aiden saw it and he was like, can I have some? And then, of course, I just like gave him a little plate of mac and cheese and he loved it, you guys. It was really good. So now I'm gonna be doing my stuffing, which is super simple. And I explained to you guys that um, I don't really like dressing. That's why I haven't done a dressing recipe. I'm not, I'm just not a fan of dressing. This is my favorite store bought. Um, this is my favorite store-bought stuffing. If you guys want to see how I made this from scratch not using the store-bought mixture, I will have that linked in the description as well as 
a little pop up right now. Um, but like I said, this is just as good. Do your stuffing however you like. You can add meat, sausage, ham, what, however you guys like to zhuzh up your stuffing, go ahead. I like it pretty simple. That is just my preference. So I'm gonna be sauteing up some celery and onion. And I just saute that until they're translucent. And for two boxes, you're supposed to use like two, I wanna say like three cups of stock. I actually didn't even need all that. All I used was, I'm gonna say, I used one and three fourths of a cup of liquid, I think. Like I said, the preference is up to you, but as soon as you pour your liquid into your, um, your bread mixture, your stuffing mixture, just know that it is, the bread is going to absorb. So you wanna put enough so that's not dry. And then you also don't wanna to put too much where it's not soggy. But like I said, that's also a preference. If you like the more soggy, you know, dressing kind of route go ahead and do what you do boo but this is good i'm just giving you guys what i think what my taste buds really enjoy and i promise if you make any of these recipes it will not be a fail and then i'm gonna make my gravy real quick so i strained out what was left of the chicken with the bottom of the chicken and then i added in a fourth a cup of flour you want to have like a one-to-one -one ratio so whatever you have left from your chicken drippings you want to have that one-to-one -one ratio I would start off with one cup, let it simmer, and if it's too thick, add more liquid. But I ended up adding chicken stock, not water. You can also use water, but if you want more flavor, use chicken stock. And then I let it simmer, and then I add salt and pepper, and then you guys can see the consistency is really, is really nice consistency. It wasn't too thick, it wasn't too thin. And then I pour that and set it off to the side. Then I'm gonna do my cranberries really quick. Like I said, this is so quick. Um, I did a half a bag of the standard cranberries that you get at the store, and then I filled uh, the water up too. I filled, I actually put too much water. I would do a little bit less, a little bit below your cranberries, and then I added a fourth a cup of sugar, and then some pumpkin pie spice. I would have did lemon, but like I said, it didn't have any lemon. And then I just let that simmer until it was nice and bubbly like that. And you know when it's done is when it's like, has a bunch of small bubbles. That's how you know it's really thickened up. And um, now I'm gonna go in and finish my rolls. This is how they look after they've been sitting on the counter proofing from the frozen. And I just put those in, I think it was like 425 for 10, 10, 15 minutes. And then I butter the top of that. And now we've made it, you guys. And then I set up everything. Um, I forgot to put my pumpkin pie out because it was in the freezer and I totally forgot about it. I was trying to cool it off as quickly as possible. But towards the end of the video, I actually pull it out and eat it and you guys will see that. So make sure you are stay tuned all the way to the end of the video. If you guys are still here, leave me some apple emojis. Leave me some apple emojis if you guys are still here and I will see you in the mukbang portion. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. And today, as you can see and tell from the title, uh, we're eating Thanksgiving today. You know, believe it or not, Thanksgiving is my favorite, my second favorite holiday right after Christmas and then Halloween. I was at the store too, and I'm just gonna tell you guys really quickly like, like how nerve wracking it was. I don't wanna say nerve wracking, but I was like, what should I make from scratch and what should I not make from scratch? Because as you guys can tell, I said, I'm gonna make this in one hour, a one hour Thanksgiving. Let me just, let me just build a plate. Let me just build a plate. I know y'all like, don't put too much on your plate. You already know you can't eat all that. Listen, shh, 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 shh. I'm gonna get some mac and cheese. Yo, this plate, this is, this is already legit. I just used the wrong spoon for my gravy. That's all right, that's all right. Then I'm gonna take a chicken breast. I'm gonna take a chicken breast. I'm gonna take a roll. Put it right there. Right over here. Look at that. All right, let me take a couple bites. Let me take a couple bites. Move that out my way. Mm. 
Oh my gosh. Mm, look at how tender. Look at how tender that is. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me talk. Let me talk first before I, I'm because it's it's going down. Okay, <laughs> I don't even wanna stop right now. Okay, so as you guys can see from the title, I said I'm gonna do this in one hour. This is what I came up with, okay? And if you're wondering, there are a couple things missing. I do not have ham, I do not have yams. I sound like Sam I am, that's so cringe. Um, and I didn't do turkey. And what else did I do? Uh, I think I did pretty much everything that I like and could fit in one hour. So I did greens from scratch. I got the rolls pre-made. These are my favorite pre-made yeast rolls. I love these if I'm not making rolls from scratch. And then I decided to make the mac and cheese from scratch, but I decided to add Velveeta and I never do that because you guys know I don't like Velveeta. Um, I made the cranberries from scratch because it takes like, it, it literally took me like five minutes to make that. And then the stuffing, you guys know that that is my favorite stuffing. Um, I do not like dressing. I think there's just a type of way you can make it and I don't like um, stuff like the the dressing where you mix it all together and it's like a wet mixture and then you put it in the oven. There's something about that that I just don't like and that is my favorite store-bought stuffing. I, I love that stuff. Um, and then I made the mashed potatoes from scratch because I figured this is super easy to make. And then I did chicken instead of turkey because turkey just seems like a pain in the ass like to make. So I decided to do chicken. It's smaller, it's juicier, I can control it. And then I made the gravy. All right, let's start eating. I like I've been talking too much. And my food, my food is cold. Mm. I literally feel like I'm sitting here having Thanksgiving with you guys. I love cranberry. If you guys like cr cranberry, leave a like right now. Mm. This chicken is so tender. If you guys watched the recipe portion, you guys saw it. You guys saw it fall apart. It's hard to get everything on your, on your fork. Everything is so good. I swear, like, when I was younger, the way I thought about Thanksgiving was like everybody in the kitchen slaving over cooking a meal. And I just figured like, you guys can't even see my plate. Let's move all this stuff. I feel like I'm doing damage on my plate already. Oh. 
Ow. <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, Thanksgiving just reminds me of like everybody in the kitchen. And like this making this huge meal, it takes forever. Um, I really don't feel like it has to be like that. I feel like, especially if you're making something for like, like a small, like a small crowd, just pick your favorites or just pick like the traditional stuff because I'm actually not gonna be eating any of this on Thanksgiving. I've decided to do something super small, something that I haven't had in a while. And um, I'm basically having two Thanksgivings because you guys, Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm gonna, oh my gosh. I'm gonna take a nap after this. I'm taking a nap. <clears throat> Greens are my favorite part of Thanksgiving, y'all. Tell me down in the comments below what your favorite part of Thanksgiving is. Mm. This chicken is so juicy. I'm actually shocked right now. <laughs> I'm not even talking. I'm actually shocked. I just cooked all this up and sat down and I'm eating it. I'm telling you it's because I did it so fast. So it took me, <clears throat> it took me an, like two hours because I have to film it. So obviously filming adds double the time of anything that I'm doing. So it took about an hour and I think the whole key to get it done super quickly is get the big things done first um so i put the chicken in immediately i started my greens immediately and this takes like a second so whatever you're doing do the biggest things first start with the biggest things first i'm not gonna say obviously because some people i did uh, somebody left a comment um and said that my chicken dinner that i did wasn't beginner friendly at all and i'm like it like to me it was super super easy but i could see how somebody who doesn't know cooking at all could see like could could think like okay yeah that's not beginner friendly so <clears throat> i don't want to assume now you know what i mean i don't want to assume i feel like i try to explain as much as possible so that you guys aren't like lost in the sauce when making recipes I'm trying to explain and make recipes that will basically, even the even a person that doesn't know how to cook at all, I try to do it and explain it in a way that you could do it and it not be overwhelming. I don't like yams. That's why y'all ain't gonna see no yams out, up here. I don't like yams. I don't like sweet potato. <gasps> you guys, I forgot the pie. I forgot the pie. <laughs> Y'all, I forgot the pie. Put the pie in the middle. We didn't forget about you, pie. Oh, oh no. Okay, so I did all of this in an hour plus that damn pie and I cooled it down. I cooled that pie down as fast as I humanly could. Uh, why didn't I do the pie yesterday? Listen guys, don't. Don't, don't ask me. Sometimes when I, when I decide to do a video or like video recipes, I'm like, 
I wake up that morning, I'm like, you know what, I should do that. I know it's terrible, it's terrible. Look, listen, who is an OG of the L fam? Who's, who's an OG? I wanna know right now. You will know I never finish anything. I suck at finishing stuff because I'm so worked up from cooking. But look at this, y'all. Y'all would be proud of me. Y'all saw my plate? Let's just do a flashback real quick. Y'all saw my plate when I started. I ain't save room for the dessert. Don't be mad. <laughs> That's it. Thanksgiving in one hour. Thanksgiving in one hour and I actually damn near finished my plate. I feel like this is a foolproof Thanksgiving. Like, let's say you don't know how to cook at all and you make this and you invite like a friend or two over or you invite your parents or whatever, they're gonna be like, wow. Okay, that wasn't bad. <gasps> I forgot the green bean casserole. Why is my face so white? No, oh, why is my face so white? <laughs> That's so weird. Okay, all right, let's just have a moment. A moment in silence. Look at my plate, fam. Look at my plate. Oh, this is the chicken skin. I don't know why I didn't eat the chicken skin, as a matter of fact. It was, it's, it's actually really crispy, really good. I gotta be in the mood for chicken skin, though. All right, that's what I would eat. If I had to hurry up and do something, this is what I would make. And I made that pie. I'm so mad I can't eat that pie right now. Nope, I can't. We're gonna put the plate to the side and we're gonna, we gonna try the pie. I can't, I cannot not try the pie. All right, I'm back. We gotta try the pie and yes, for anybody who's gonna be triggered for how I cut this, listen, you try to cut your pie on camera. Oh no. Bring this to me. All right. There it is. Let's try this pie real quick. I can't tell you. Oh, it's cold. Okay. I don't got my whipped cream, but that's it right there. Believe it or not, the crust is cooked through. Okay, if I had some whipped cream. Oh 
good. I can't finish it. That's good. That's good. Wow, you guys, we did it. We did it. Thanksgiving in one hour. If you guys are still here, let me know. What, what are you guys making for Thanksgiving? Let me know down in the comments below. Just like move all this stuff over, just take a nap like right, right here. So tired. That was good though. I'm super glad you guys are here. That's how you know I'm getting time like, uh, but I'm super glad you guys are here. That's it. If you guys are still here, leave me some pie emojis. Are there pie emojis? Leave me some pumpkin emojis, pie emojis, cake emojis, I don't know. Leave me some sort of Thanksgiving emojis down in the comments below and I will meet you guys down there. I'm pretty sure I said what I need to, oh, hey, I tried that Popeye's chicken sandwich last night, you guys. It is not worth the hype. I feel so bad for cheating on Chick-fil-A. Um, the sandwich wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but it it's just not worth the hype. You know what I mean? I think that's that's the part that kind of that kind of kills it. But it wasn't a bad sandwich. It's definitely more crunchier. Like it's definitely a more crunchier sandwich. Um, but I didn't like the pickles. I didn't like the pickles in it. And I felt like it just wasn't as soft as Chick-fil-A. And I just, like, whatever Chick-fil-A is doing, obviously they've been doing it for a very long time, so they know what they're doing as far as chicken sandwiches go. And um, it was, I, I prefer Chick-fil-A over Popeye's chicken sandwich. I feel like Chick-fil-A has more flavor. It has more, like, softness in their, in their, um, in their bun. Their pickles aren't weird. Um, I, what I ended up doing was like taking the chicken out of my sandwich and I got like an extra side of gravy and I just ate the chicken with the gravy and it was good like that. Um, but the sandwich is definitely not worth the hype, y'all. It was not worth the hype. Um, anyway, but leave me a comment below if you really, really like the Chick-fil-A sandwich or do you really, really like the Popeye sandwich? I don't know. I guess it's all just a personal preference. If we all had the same taste buds, it'd be a very, very boring array of food that we have. So I definitely prefer Chick-fil-A. Tell me what you guys think. I love you guys, okay? And I will see you in the next video.